Welcome to the Kansas State Fair where we are celebrating all things Kansas. Today we are showcasing the best the fair has to offer. First, let's go to Camille Franco to learn more about the Domestic Arts Building. The Domestic Arts Building showcases art made from the heart. Quilt making, cooking, and handmade clothing made by artists in our community. Well, on the south end we have textiles and clothing which includes uh, quilts, as you can see, there's a lot of them. We have uh, clothing, we have baby clothes, all sorts of things. Kathy Petz, the manager of the Domestic Arts Program, stated the most interesting thing about the art is the story behind these unique items. We have, in the middle of our building, we have a Quilts with a Story, and that's a non-judged event, and we have nine quilts and a crocheted item. All of those were made by families or individuals. We've got one that's almost 100 years old and they all have a story about how they came to be. Also in this building are the cooking demonstrations. Pet says that all this food is homemade by regular people and not professionals. On the north side, we have foods. So we have canning jars against the wall. We've, we've judged pies, we've judged breads, and so samples of those and their ribbons are all in our display cases. This building is unique because it preserves an art form that we struggle sometimes to keep going. We want people to learn about quilting and that just anybody can do it. Uh, if, you, if you have an interest in it, you can do it and you can see quilts or you can see crochet things or knitting things and maybe it'll give you an idea that maybe I could go home and learn that. Check out the Domestic Arts Building to appreciate art passed down through generations. For BBN, I'm Camille Franco. Thanks Camille. Loves and alpacas are on display here at the fair. Tatum Brown highlights his unique experience. When coming to the Kansas State Fair, you can expect to see all kinds of farm animals. Among the cattle, sheep, and horses is an animal that you might be surprised to see. Here at the Dairy Barn, you can come visit the llama and alpaca display and learn about these unique animals and their contribution to agriculture. At the display, we learned that llamas and alpacas are primarily raised for their wool, which can be made into garments like warm socks and sweaters. We spoke with Jerry Rutledge, an alpaca farmer and crafter, about their herd and how the products are used. The products that we make, I do all the um, scarves, and this is on a rake loom, we do the hats, and then we have stuffed animals, which we just get, but otherwise it's the looms and the bags and those kind of things. So I can send it to the mill and have it made into skeins of yarn, and they do it a lot faster than I can. Oh gosh, 30 years ago I was at a state fair and I saw their eyelashes and their eyes, <laughs> and that was, that was it, that sold me. Very easy. They're very, very good self-keepers. They need the pasture. Um, they get regular hay. You give grain as a treat. So if they ever give out, you can catch them and they'll come back. Um, Alfalfa is kind of like a crouton salad to them. So just regular hay. The difference between llamas and alpacas and that they're fiber producers. So it's not an animal that we eat or consume. They live to be as old as they want to be on my farm. And the shearing is, is what, what I use. Watching the people come through the fair and the kids and the generations. This weekend we had so many two, three, and four generation families. It was awesome. Come check out the llama and alpaca display here at the Kansas State Fair. The producers have a great array of information on display to broaden your knowledge of these amazing animals. For BBN, I'm Tatum Brown. Thanks, Tatum. Pronto Pups might as well be a food group here at the Kansas State Fair. Brody Spear has a story. Pronto Pup is one of many great food stop options served at the Kansas State Fair. Pronto Pups is mostly known for their delicious corn dogs. We stick them and dip them fresh and people love them. Other than corn dogs, Pronto has a wide variety of food options like funnel cakes, Philly steak sandwiches, and German sausage. I spoke with Dwight Weedle, the owner of Pronto Pup, about the history of Pronto Pup. My father-in-law started cooking Pronto Pups here in the early 1960s and uh, this will be D&J Pronto Pups. 50th State Fair. Weedle explained that Prano Pup is more than just the average corn dog. The unique thing about a Prano Pup is it's made with this wheat and rice flour uh, franchise flour mix. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just different than a corn dog. A lot of times we say it's better than a corn dog ever dreamt about being. Get a taste of Kansas State Fair history with Prano Pup. For BBN, I'm Brody Spear. Thanks, Brody. I hope everyone had an amazing time at the fair. For BBN, I'm Jacob Harris.